Our presentation today is about the thyroid and parathyroid glands. Thyroid gland is derived from the first and second pharyngeal pouch. As, as seen in, the, in this image, this is the first and second pharyngeal pouch. Then this descent in the thyroglossal duct uh, to the its future part in the uh, in the neck. It consists uh, of two lateral loops joined by an isthmus and lies anterior and lateral to the trachea. The loops are approximately 4 cm in height and extend from the thy thyroid cartilage of the trachea superiorly to the fourth or even the sixth trachea ring inferiorly. The loops are described as having upper and lower pools. The loops are often asymmetrical, with the right being larger and more vascular than the left. The isthmus is, is dropped uh, across the second to fourth trachea rings at the level of C6. A small midline superior extension of the isthmus called a pyramidal loop uh, may be present. This is the pyramidal loop and may be as large as in this image. This is the pyramidal loop. The gland this is the pretracheal fascia, uh, and this is the thyroid gland uh, that surrounds the thyroid gland, also the trachea. The, uh, the esophagus and above it, the pharynx, and above the trachea is the larynx. Uh, posterior lateral to the thyroid gland is the, uh, the carotid uh, vessels and the neck vessels, and posterior medial to the gland are the uh, prevertebral uh, uh, muscles that lined by the prevertebral fascia. Anterior to the gland are the strap muscles of the neck and the steromastoid muscles invest, invested in an outer layer of fascia superficial. These are the strap muscles and the steromastoid muscle. These are the anterior jugular vein and uh, these are the external jugular vein. And the posterior lateral are the uh, neck vessels. And this is the esophagus. At the level of C6, the gland appears as two triangles of tissue derived across the trachea by the connecting isthmus. Each triangular loop measures approximately 3 cm in depth by 2 cm in width and has a convex anterior surface. Citrap muscles of the next sternomastoid and jugular veins are anterior. Posterior lateral surface is related to the carotid sheath. The posterior medial surface lies on the trachea and esophagus and may be interposed between them. Blood supply, uh, two constant pairs of inferior thyroid artery, and the inferior thyroid artery arises from the thyrocervical trunk, which is a branch of the subclavian artery. This is the inferior thyroid artery, which is a, bra uh, which is a branch from the thyrocervical trunk, from the subclavian artery. Uh, note that there, there, there is a third artery in 3% of the population, uh, which is called the thyroidia emma artery, or the aortic arch, and ascends anterior to the trachea to join in the anastomotic plexus. This diagram shows the thyroidia emma artery that arises from the aorta. A venous plexus on the surface of the gland. Uh, two, uh, the superior and middle thyroid vein drain into the internal jugular vein, and the inferior thyroid vein drain into the left brachiocephalic vein. Ectopic thyroid tissue and ectopic thyroid tissue uh, gland is one which is located in a location other than the normal position, anterior to the la laryngeal cartilage. During embryological development, the thyroid gland migrates down from the foramen cecum in the base of the tongue. 
at the posterior aspect of the tongue to its permanent location in the infrahyoid neck. Uh, this normal migration can be halted at any point or indeed can go off, uh, can go off target with thyroid tissue coming to rest in unusual locations within the neck or elsewhere. The location, the most common location is the lingual or base of the tongue in 90% and uh, also sublingual, uh, prelaryngeal and other sites, the mediastinum on, uh, or intratracheal. Let's see this uh, case from Radiopedia about the ectopic lingual gland. Hi, the show for تمام تمام هم تشوفوها معناتها خلي بس انزلها تمام This case from Radiopedia about lingual uh, thyroid in uh, ectopic site this is a transverse view of ultrasound of the neck that uh, in which you, uh, we cannot see the thyroid gland in its normal site. As we have said, we can see the thyroid gland in the region of the tongue. And uh, in the CT, we can, we can uh, see clearly the uh, ectopic site in the tongue. This is the tongue and this is the thyroid tissue. In the sagittal image, we can see clearly the ectopic gland. This is the ectopic thyroid tissue. The second case about the prelaryngeal location, this is the uh, uh, ultrasound scan of the neck in which we, uh, also we cannot see the thyroid tissue in its normal site. And as we ascend, we can see it in a uh, prelaryngeal location with, with normal vascularity on color doubler. Thyroglossal duct may persist as a midline structure extending superiorly from the uh, uh, isthmus of the gland, and a thyroglossal cyst may be found at any site related to this site. Let's see a case of, of thyroglossal duct from Radiopedia. This is uh, an axial CT scan, sagittal CT scan in which you can see the thyroid gland. This is the thyroid gland from, from, uh, and from the isthmus, we can see the thyroglossal uh, duct that ended in a thyroglossal cyst. In the uh, axial CT scan with uh, contrast, we can see this is the thyroid gland from which we can see thyroglossal duct that ended in a cystic lesion, which is a thyroglossal duct cyst. More commonly, 40% part of the duct persists as the pyramidal loop of the gland extending superiorly from the isthmus or the medial part of either loop, more commonly the left. Radiology of the thyroid gland. Ultrasound. Ultrasound of the gland with a high frequency transducer provides excellent detail. The normal thyroid gland has a homogeneous ecotexture of medium ecogenicity. The carotid vessels may be seen as an echoic structure on either side of the gland. The citra muscles are seen as structures of low ecogenicity. The prevertebral muscles may be identified posteriorly. The numerous vascular structures may be seen surrounding the gland, and its extreme vascularity is readily appreciated with color flow imaging. This is a panoramic view of the thyroid uh, gland ultrasound in which you can see the th right loop of the thyroid, left loop of the thyroid, between them the isthmus, the isthmus, and posterior to it is the trachea and the esophagus. These are the neck vessels, and these are the citrate muscles and sternocleidomastoid. Nuclear medicine studies, isotope scanning provides functional rather than anatomical detail. Both loops and isthmus can be identified. It is useful for identifying ectopic thyroid tissue, which is most likely to be in the base of the tongue reflecting its site of development. Technetium or iodine labeled agents are used. 
CT may be used to assess the gland in the axial plane. It shows as soft tissue areas of high attenuation because of iodine content. This is a thy thyroidic gland. The surrounding structures of the neck may, be, may also be imaged. Imaging with short scan times during dynamic infusion of contrast gives the best image and definition of the gland and surrounding structures. MRI can image the gland in any plane along with the surrounding structures. The gland is of higher signal intensity than surrounding muscles on T2. This is a T2 sequence in which you can see the hyperintense uh, thyroid gland from the surrounding. And in the T1, uh, we can see it is mildly hyperintense than the surrounding muscles. On the uh, contrast enhanced, it is homogeneously enhancing. The parathyroid glands, these uh, endocrine glands are small lentiform structures measuring approximately 6 millim in length, 3 to 4 millim in transverse diameter, and 1 to 2 millim in AP diameter. They usually number 4, 2 superior, and 2 inferior, but any number from 2 to 6 is possible. The glands lie posterior to the thyroid gland within its facial sheath in 90% of cases. Superior gland lie on the posterior border of the uh, middle uh, third of the thyroid and the inferior gland lie near the lower pool of the thyroid. Superior gland develops from the fourth uh, pharyngeal pouch and does not migrate. This is the superior gland that develops from the third pharyngeal pouch. The inferior, uh, inferior gland develops from the third pharyngeal pouch and descends inferiorly with the, with the thymus. Mild descent may, may cause the inferior parathyroid gland to be found in ectopic sites, and this may be of clinical importance in the search for parathyroid adenoma. The most common ectopic site is just below the inferior pool of the thyroid. So le let's see a case on the ectopic parathyroid. This is axial CT scan of the uh, of the patient that in, in which you can see clearly the thyroid gland, and below it we can see this nodule is the uh, ectopic parathyroid as as uh, seen in this image with this label. This is the ectopic parathyroid gland. Occasionally, the gland descends into the superior mediastinum with the thymus. Less commonly, it does not descend at all and remains above the superior parathyroid, or it may be found behind the esophagus or in the posterior mediastinum. Most of the blood supply of the, of the parathyroid glands is derived from the inferior thyroid artery. Radiology of the parathyroid gland. In the cross-sectional imaging, the normal parathyroids are not seen radiologically. They may be imaged when enlarged. So on ultrasound, they, uh, they are seen as hypochoic structures lying posterior to the thyroid glands. Let's see a case in radiopedia about parathyroid hyperplasia that is seen by an ultrasound. This is transverse uh, image of the uh, thyroid gland in which you can see uh, the normal uh, right loop. And this is the normal left loop of the thyroid gland. Below it, we can see this uh, mass, hypochoic mass, which is originated from the inferior uh, parathyroid gland. And this is the uh, from, uh, originated from the superior parathyroid gland. And this case is a, uh, is, uh, is a case of parathyroid hyperplasia. So uh, if the parathyroid glands is enlarged, it may be seen by the uh, ultrasound study or cross-sectional studies. On CT, the parathyroids appear as structures of lower attenuation than thyroid tissue. On nuclear medicine studies, the, the parathyroids may be imaged using a subtraction technique, but the thyroid and the parathyroid glands take up thallium and, and the, the thyroid, but not the parathyroids take up the technetium pertechnate. So by comput computerized subtraction of technetium image from the thallium image, uh, the parathyroids may be demonstrated. Let's see a case on the 
scintigraphic image of the parathyroid. This is a, a, a para, there is a parathyroid adenoma seen by uh, ultrasound. This is uh, the nodule, hypoconic nodule is the parathyroid adenoma. On scintigraphic study, it is confirmed uh, 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 in this site, in the, in the uh, left inferior parathyroid region. Now we reach the quiz. Shukran, Dr. Mohamed Mehdi. I'm going to get the network. No, I'm going to delay it. I'm going to delay it. Delay it. Delay it. I'm going to delay it. I'm going to delay it. I'm going to delay it. نعم استاذ استنى في دم استوي استنى جاي دم استوي زين نور محمد الجواد نعم استاذ الاسمس اوف الثايرويد بلاند اسمس اوف ذا ثايرويد بلاند رقم أربعة أحمد خليل نعم استاذ نمبر فور ذا تريكي يعني الليفت سايد اوف ذا تريكي اي رقم اربعة رقم خمسة دعاء دعاء سعد ليفت كمان كاروتيد ارتوري ليفت كمان كاروتيد ارتوري زين زهراء صباح نعم ستة ليفت لوب اوف ذا ثايرويد Left lobe of the thyroid. Sally Abdul Rada, آخر واحدة. Left internal jugular vein. Left internal jugular vein. Hi, Kimlin. Kimlin. Hi, Steve Dick. Hi, 